your name, please? Chuck Pinocchio. And your work? Executive Director, Healthcare for All Pennsylvania. What's your day job? I'm a professor at University of the Arts. I teach history. Where is that? In Center City, Philadelphia. Okay. And so you're pushing for single payer here in Pennsylvania. There's That's legislation. Correct. Right, right. How ha many members of the legislature are signed on? Uh, right now, 47. Uh, and that includes four Republicans. And how many do you need in the House and the Senate to get it passed? In the House, we need 102 votes. And in the Senate, we need 26 votes. Okay, how many in each do you have? Oh, uh, in the Senate, we have 11. And in the House, we have uh, 43. 40. Okay, and uh, how long have you been working on this? For three years, full time. And uh, what about Governor Ed Rendell? What's his position? Um, uh, first among governors committed to signing single payer legislation, so we have his commitment to signing the bill. And so, what needs to be done to get it done here in Pennsylvania? Uh, activating citizens to lobby, to educate themselves, to educate our legislators, to reach out to their associations, their communities, and get people to pile on in support of the legislation. Have there been hearings? There have been several hearings, uh, caucus hearings in both the Democratic House and the Republican House caucus, and a standing committee hearing already in Health and Human Services in the House. And uh, what's the status of Republican support for the bill? Um, it's, it's wait and see, and it will be based on the economic impact study that we're in the process of pursuing. Well, how many Republicans support it? We have four Republicans all in the House right now. And uh, what's the status of a possible economic impact study? Uh, it's looking very positive going forward as we collaborate with state work in Maryland, uh, in California. Maryland, California, Pennsylvania are coming together, and we're pulling resources to get the study done. It's looking very promising. What do you think a, such a study would show? It would demonstrate the dramatic administrative savings, the dramatic prescription drug savings, uh, the dramatic uh, savings with regard to defensive medicine, curtailing defensive medicine. Um, it would demonstrate the jobs creation. Uh, we anticipate 140,000 new jobs, keeping our hospitals from closing, as well as keeping our doctors from retiring prematurely, and leaving our and keeping our young doctors in the state. So, um, California passed single payer twice, but it was vetoed twice by the Terminator governor. Right. Um, is Pennsylvania, next to California, the most active single payer state? That's my sense. That's my estimation, having talked to my peers across the nation. Yeah, Pennsylvania, in terms of activism, is number two to California, but we actually have political advantages in Pennsylvania that do not yet exist in California. Such as? Uh, again, the commitment of the governor to sign it here, which doesn't exist in California, plus the funding authorization, which is embedded in our legislation, but is not embedded in the California legislation. Do you have a constitutional problem in passing single payer at the state level? Um, no, we don't have a constitutional problem. There are certain federal regulations that attach to the federal dollars that come to the state. Medicare, Medicaid, VA, and CHIPS dollars. Uh, but those those issues, those regulations are in the process of being waived by legislation percolating, percolating up in both the House and the Senate and Congress. So we don't anticipate any problems constitutionally. You're holding a rally tomorrow in the state capitol in Harrisburg? On Tuesday. On Tuesday. And what's the point? Uh, the point is to demonstrate that people from all walks of life are eager to get this done because we are literally hemorrhaging uh, economically. Uh, we're suffering unnecessarily. Uh, we're being driven into bankruptcy. Um, our hospitals are closing. We're losing our doctors. We need to save all of those things. We need to save Pennsylvania. But also, we want Pennsylvania to serve as a model for the nation. So that's really what's at stake. And citizens um, from Pennsylvania and the region are going to pile on to Harrisburg. We anticipate at least a 1,000 people. Will, um, will Pennsylvania be the first state in the union to have single payer? Yes. Once our bill passes, we, in fact, will be the first to have single payer. When will it pass? Um, it's like anything else. It's difficult to predict in politics, but our goal is to get it passed this fall and to have the bill passed out of the House and Senate and have a conference bill passed by the House and Senate 
and get it to the governor for signature by November 19th of this year. That's our goal. And uh, if people want more information, what's the website? www.healthcare, numeral four, allpa.org. Healthcare, numeral four, all, A-L-L-P-A.org. And if people outside of Pennsylvania wanted to help you, what should they do? Um, they should contact us through the website. Um, they can call me directly. I'm open to sharing my phone number, 215-828-5055. Uh, we need help raising funds to get the economic impact study done, and uh, we need resource support beyond that. So that's really what we need from other folks. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Rob.